Hey, hey, welcome everyone to this week's episode of the Amazon Files brought to you by Mommy Income. I am your host, Kristen Ostrander, and we are going to talk about Q4. Why? Because it is upon us. Within the next couple of weeks, October 1st dawns the beginning of Q4. So if you don't know what Q4 is, Q4 is the last three months of the year. Oftentimes it's talked about in the financial world, but here at Amazon e-commerce, it is the hottest, most profitable selling season of the year for most people. Um, it is the Christmas season, the holiday season. We've got major holidays, uh, four of them in Q4. And then other holidays and other events and other things that are available there. So I just want to help you prepare, no matter if this is your first Q4 or it's your 14th Q4 or 22nd Q4, we all need reminders of what to do and what to do early. And as the landscape changes throughout all the years through um, pre, everything now is like pre-COVID, post-COVID right? The first shutdown and all the supply chain issues that we've had and all things like that, that literally has changed the landscape of shipping, of ordering products, of lead times, of everything. So you need to pay attention to some of those things. And here I'm going to give you some basic tips, some reminders for those who have been doing this long time, but also some new stuff that you might not have considered, considering all of the different things that have changed over the years in Q4. So I'm gonna go through some tips. I'm gonna to talk to you about um, what you need to do, uh, certain things here and there. So make sure you're taking notes or you keep this like downloaded or whatever it is that you do so you can kind of go back to it if you're you know, walking or driving or you know, something like that because these are just like tried and true things that have happened year over year that really help you do well in the holiday season. Now, one of the number one things that people freak out about is am I going to um, have leftovers? Like, honestly, it's not about, am I going to sell all my stuff and need more, which actually should be more of a worry than not selling enough and then being left with a bunch of holiday items that you can't offload until the following season. So one of the things that I wanted to talk about was, are you, are you buying enough inventory to last you through Q4? But not enough to where you're like, oh my gosh, I have 112 units left over in January and they're going to have to carry over. I mean, yeah, that's a real thing. Go to the stores after Christmas and see that all of these companies, every Target, Walmart, every single store you go to has clearance at the end of Christmas. Why? Because nobody, I want to say that again, nobody, not Target, not even Apple, not even Apple. doesn't have things left over at the end of the year. No one sells through all of their holiday inventory, every single thing gone, nothing left, nothing clearance, nothing liquidate. They all do it because they have to be prepared. They have to put something on the shelf and some things just do better than others. There's trends, there's things that are new. There's just a packaging flaw that ends up having, you know, a bunch of leftover stuff. So just know that ahead of time and just be ready you're probably going to have a few things left over after Q4. And guess what? That is normal. That is regular. And we deal with it. Donate it to Goodwill, just like Target does. Did you know that Target sells all of their liquidations to Goodwill at a fraction of the cost? And then Goodwill takes those new goods, marks them up for the next year. So if you go to Goodwill right now in my area, you will find Target all kinds of stuff from Target from last year or years past that they either donated and or gave and or sold, most likely sold for pennies on the dollar, um, to Goodwill. You're going to see Halloween costumes. You're going to see Christmas stuff. You're going to see um, just stock that was overstock or just, you know, dead inventory to Target. They offload it to Goodwill and then people go and scoop it up for cheaper. So all summer I was seeing, you know, bathing suits. These are from the season before. So that's the thing. Is, it, is something going to go in and out of style in just one year? Yeah, trends come and go for sure. But there's also steady eddies. You know, you still get same costumes, you know, dinosaurs and princesses and, you know, cops and robbers and all, like, all the different things that you see, you will see right now at the Goodwill because they buy Target's overstock. All that to say, overstock is normal, so don't freak out. 
But the other flip side to that is if you don't buy it, you can't sell it and profit from it. So one of the number one things to um, avoid is bad inventory management and bad planning. First of all, you cannot sell what you don't have on the shelf. In order to have enough inventory to sell during Q4, you need to have money to make a purchase. Uh, a lot of companies, especially wholesale, can offer dating, which means if you order from them, you do not have to pay for Christmas inventory until mid-December, meaning you can sell most of your items before you even have to pay your bill. Isn't that amazing? So thank you, wholesale. So wholesale dating for that, not dating, not Tinder kind of dating, <laughs> dating as in you can pay for your stuff later. It's free credit. It's no interest. It's buy now, pay later for exact price. I mean, you can't ask your vendors if they have dating for any of this stuff. I know that some of my favorite ones are like Boston International has um, some dating. I don't know if PBK does, but I don't know. Anyway, check with your vendors because they also want to sell their inventory. They don't want to be left with the Christmas stuff that you didn't buy either. So they want to be able to move. There's a lot of times too at this time of year. First of all, just as a full disclaimer, me and my company for Amazon FBA, we have already ordered and received all of our Q4 inventory already. And today's date, it's, it's September. So all of it is already received. Halloween stuff's been in Amazon FBA, live listed in Amazon FBA for a month already. It, August, we get our shipments late July, they go in the beginning of August. And a lot of times our Halloween stuff sells out before we even hit October. It just depends on what you sell. It depends on what you sell. A lot of people ask, what do you sell? Okay, well, we do not sell Halloween costumes. We actually don't, we've never sold any costumes. Sometimes we sell the costume accessories. Uh, a lot of times we sell the smalls. We sell the little things like the makeup kits and the accessories sometimes to the costumes. We don't sell anything perishable, although candy does obviously really well, but so does everyone else. It's after Halloween that some of the, the rare Thanksgiving and Hall Halloween Thanksgiving, <laughs> funny, um, the Halloween candy will sell for better later on. Um, after you know, all the stores have cleared out of it, it's like the beginning of November and you're going to start seeing candy corn in three packs on Amazon selling like crazy. Because, um, I mean, did you know you can actually buy candy corn year round, but it's just not as readily available at every store as it is for the next six weeks. So just so you know, people just buy it on Amazon. It's convenient, y'all. Amazon is convenient. That's why people shop there. That's really why. It's how many of us, I mean, if you're honest with yourself, you know that this is true for you. How many of you have overpaid for something on Amazon because it was just so convenient to search it, press the button, press buy it now and have it arrive two days later, knowing that you could go to the store and get it for probably 30% less than what you're paying for on Amazon. You just don't want to, right? We've all done this. This is who we sell to. We sell to ourselves and other people who are just so busy or just don't want to be bothered with having to go to a store that they in turn go directly to Amazon and overpay a little bit because they're paying for what? Convenience and personal delivery. I mean, y'all have heard of DoorDash. DoorDash is not cheap, you guys. Like, I, I was laughing at my kids not too long ago when I'm like, literally, you DoorDashed McDonald's. McDonald's is a mile from here. Go pick up McDonald's and bring it to you. Well, I'm just playing my video games. I don't want to have to go get it, stop what I'm doing, go there, come back. I have one kid that absolutely will DoorDash, and the other kid was like, heck no. I am not paying six more dollars for something that's literally a mile away. To each his own. But either way, as Amazon sellers, we profit from those people who just don't want to or don't have the time. So that's who you're serving, even through Q4. And guess what? People spend so much money during this time of year. Yeah, a lot of people are looking for good deals and Amazon definitely wants to be competitive when it comes to pricing. But let's be honest, most things are costing more on Amazon because you're getting free shipping, you're getting it delivered, you're getting what you want when you want it in the color and size that you want it and put on your doorstep. So you pay everyone understands that Amazon Prime is a convenience fee and we all end up paying it, right? So remember who you're selling to. 
plan to save a little bit of extra money for Q4 because it's worth it. So at this point, we're not saving any. We're really just kind of spending it and looking forward to it. Now, do not neglect when it comes to your inventory management and planning. Don't neglect the stuff that you sell on a regular basis. So if you have evergreen products or grocery items or anything that you're like replenishable products or bundles that are just evergreen, don't neglect those. Make sure that you stock up on everything because everything's going to be selling. As people see all oh, this on oh, this, everything's going to be coming to mind. This is also another tip of looking at your listings. A lot of people think that if you put Christmas in your title and in your back end keywords, that it's going to give you more attention for the holidays. The reality is that's the last thing that you want to do. Unless your item is directly related to that holiday, it's a saturated keyword. So instead, going after the keywords that are more attribute based, right? Because we're looking for, you know, some people are, are putting, you know, cute Christmas ideas or, you know, things like that. And they're just looking for whatever. So yeah, it's important to rank there. But the reality is a lot of people are looking for some specific things. So making sure you're highlighting those keywords instead. Keywords that are most relevant to your product so that you get the best traffic. You don't want unintentional traffic. If you are selling Christmas socks, you don't want traffic from Christmas trees, right? Because it's not gonna match and it's gonna be pushing you farther down the algorithm. All right, let's talk about shipping time. Shipping timing. Be early, period. Create new bundles and listings early to give them time to index, to give them time to let Amazon know, hey, this thing is actually this thing. And people are looking for it. The algorithm seems to be very stingy lately with new launches. So you have to be very specific about your listings. Don't over spam your keywords because you know what that happens? The algorithm's like, wait a second. They say that this is all these things. And then they try to decide, they, AKA the bots, try to decide what you're selling. If you use the word, let's talk, I mean, we talk about Christmas, right? I mean, we can use the word Christmas. We can use the word coffee. We can use the word anything. Something that's very, very um, popular and searched millions of times a day. Um, making sure that you differentiate. If you are selling a Christmas stocking, make sure that it's Christmas stocking. And it says Christmas stocking for whatever. Making sure you're using your attribute colors specifically. You know, a lot of people think, oh, well, if, if it's red and green, everyone's going to put red and green. So I'm going to, you know, put these other extra words in. No, you don't want to do that. You do not want to confuse the algorithm. Say what it is. Not too much more, not too much less. A lot of people are using AI to write their listings. And I think AI is an amazing tool that we all should be utilizing in our business. But I don't think you can just set it and forget it and have a bot write your listing because a human is searching for your listing. So how are they going to type it in? Your AI is never going to write cute Christmas stuff in your AI, unless you tell it to write it from a 13 year old's perspective, perhaps. So AI is an amazing tool and yes, we all shall use it, but you should be still manually checking, writing, rewriting and simplifying your listings manually. Now, shipping timing early, early, early. That means today. That means yesterday. That means right now. Um, so it's mid September. And you want to start doing Christmas bundles right now. Now, if you're a retail arbitrager, you might not see all that stuff on the shelf yet. But if you go online, a lot of retailers are now starting to offer their Christmas items earlier online rather than in store because they still have warehouses all over the place. So consider that as well. But if you're doing retail arbitrage, you're behind the eight ball. Just saying. 
I don't mean that in an offensive way. We all, you know, I supplement with retail arbitrage sometimes, especially during Q4, because to me, I find it entertaining and fun. It's not really um, my bread and butter because I can't rely on that to be my bread and butter. It's just not, that's not, I don't, that's not the hustle game I want to play. I want to be able to have slow, steady, eddy kind of, um, money coming in and retail arbitrage to me is more of a hustle game and you're out there pounding the pavement and coming in and out and the weather starts to get bad and i just definitely don't want to mess with that during this time of year um unless i really want to unless i'm already at a store and i hit the clearance or i see something cool and i'm like oh these look like they're selling out you know i occasionally jump on something like that but then you also have ip stuff and everything else so it's just easier for me to stick with my brand stick with my bundles and occasionally throw in a retail arbitrage or a single wholesale unit kind of item because i can't help myself but in reality, I stick with bundles. Ordering early. We already have all of our Halloween and Thanksgiving and Christmas and New Year's Eve stuff already ready. We haven't shipped everything, but the listings are created and they're ready to go. We don't ship everything right away because uh, those Q4 storage fees start October 1st as well. And they charge you more to store your inventory at Amazon between October and, and January, I think even through January, which I think is really kind of a crappy move on their part, but you know, they could help us out. Couldn't they? Wouldn't that be better? Anyway, um, for retail arbitragers, ship the same day, ship the same day. If you go out and buy stuff for retail arbitrage, ship within 24 hours, I guess I'll say. Why? Because it doesn't make you money sitting there and prices fluctuate so much during this time of year, like stuff will sell out in December and then they'll replenish it and it'll be back on the shelf and it'll be gone before Black Friday, then it'll be back and then it'll be gone again. This is just kind of the sales cycles that, you know, trucks are coming in every day to places like, you know, Target and Best Buy and Big Lots and all this kind of stuff. So paying attention to those things, but also noticing if you're an arbitrager noticing where the holes are in the shelf so if you go to the toy aisle on a regular basis and you're like okay i kind of know the toy aisle by the back of my hand start seeing where things are flying off shelves if you see a specific brand of something like on the end cap and there's like a blank spot but then like two other ones you know okay this brand sells well but these items are gone and these ones that are still here then you kind of figure out which ones are more rare and you can keep your eye out for those um i don't recommend bolo lists and trendy stuff um so many people have got caught with thousands and thousands of dollars of inventory that they couldn't sell because they jumped on some hot trend like a hatchimal or back in the day like the speak out games or um you know just even back way back in the day when you know there's always this some sort of hot toy that no one can get their hands on no one can buy this and they can't find it and there's huge markups um, this year, I have no idea what it's going to be, but it's really always something. Look, avoid those like the plague. Why? Because it's just like a crapshoot. It really is like play, testing the market, playing the market. It's very risky to where we know things that sell tried and true every single year, year after year after year during Q4. Over and over again. We have a Q4 class. Did you guys know that? We have a Q4 Jumpstart class. You can reach out to us at admin at mommyincome.com and ask about the Q4 class. It's a great deal. I don't have a specific link for it right now um, because we want you guys to come and ask for it. Um, it's been on the market for several years. Uh, last time we updated it was last year, um, but all of the information is still 100% relevant. It is just talking about Q4. So if you want a super Q4 class, a Q4 jumpstart that we have is amazing. Uh, I did not do it new for this year because I've got other things going on, doing the bundle challenge, and that's really exciting for me. And so I didn't offer the live uh, Q4 class that I usually do this year, but we still have it and have the recording. If you are a hub member, you already have it. So go watch it. If you're not a hub member, I don't know, I couldn't encourage you to be one. Every single training that we've ever made is in the hub, um, except for wholesale bundle system. Wholesale bundle system is separate, but all of the other trainings are in there. In order to become a, a hub member, you need to be a wholesale bundle student, and then you can come and learn all of the things. So you will have literally every training that I've created for however many years. So Q4 Jumpstart is in the hub, and that is um mommyincome.com forward slash hub you can check out the hub there and see if that is right for you as well so making sure you do that because we do have a q4 class if you don't know anything about it just email us and we would be happy to give you a link for the class uh, if you're genuinely interested so we don't like to give all this stuff out if people are like oh we don't want another q4 class 
I'm not really like promoting it or anything. I'm just saying that we do have this training. So if it's new for you or you're interested and you're not in the hub, we can um, make an, a, a special offer for you for that class. And it's, it's cheap, y'all. It's really cheap. So just because I haven't uh, redid it in the last year, um, but it, all the information is relative and relevant for right now. Um, FEA warehouses are overwhelmed during this time of year. Smaller shipments will help processing faster. So think about this less is more when it comes to shipping. Less is more. Ship a little bit lesser items more often. So if you're doing retail arbitrage, it's fine. If you're doing wholesale orders, you know, or making sure that you just send them in as fast as you can. That's like the most important thing. Okay, let's talk about those hot trends for just a second. You know, remember fidget spinners and TikTok leggings and all, all, I mean, TikTok is everywhere. When you're on TikTok, there's so many people that want to sell you so many products right now. And, oh, this is the hot trend. And this is the hot trend. And this is the hot trend. And by the time you actually purchase those items, get them here, jump on the hot trends, jump to Alibaba and get them here and then get them in. No one cares anymore. That's how fast trends are coming and going these days. So like I tell you, so many people get stuck with these. When I say the TikTok leggings, just rewind about a year, or I mean, it's probably been more than that. And it was just, they, there were so many videos about people and these, these leggings that were like making everyone's butt look amazing. Even if you didn't have an amazing butt, apparently they had these leggings that were supposed to be these miracle workers. And there's a lot of, you know, videos of people being like, you know, like, look at this, right? So everyone bought in on these leggings and like within three or four months, it was saturated. Everybody bought them and then it was just something else is new. Something else is new. Something else is new. There's always so much to be new at. We don't chase trends. Guess how, how many years Q4 has been around? <laughs> Forever. So everything comes and goes all the time. Steady eddies. The ones that are totally selling on a regular basis. P p pajamas. Kids toys trucks and princesses and video games and video game accessories and and um sweaters and not just ugly christmas sweaters but just in general like winter apparel snow pants forget fidget spinners and and the latest tiktok trends and go buy a boatload of snow pants now my floridians are literally laughing at me right now like snow pants you're a joke okay but here they sell all the snow pants in like September and then by the time you get to December or January when you actually need them and want them and desperately are freezing your tail off, there's none to be found. They're all sold out already and now they're putting out flip flops by February. Y'all, the seasons are ahead. Go to Costco. Costco's got it, well I think it's kind of like ahead of the curve here, but like Costco has Halloween stuff by like august at the latest sometimes even july and by the time you want to go buy a halloween costume from costco they're already gone a month ago like where were you you were out on the beach because it was summer you didn't even weren't thinking about halloween right don't chase the trends there's just not enough money in it yeah you can make a few bucks here and there you maybe can flip something from 30 to 100 dollars or something like that if it's somebody's really desperate um, but for the most part, just stick with the stuff. Shiny objects won't pay the bills long term. Look for the steady, consistent profits. What sells year over year? Christmas stockings, pet Christmas stuff, um, lights, and, and your typical normal holiday decor doesn't change a whole lot. Some people bring in different color schemes and things like that, and that can be trending and that can be awesome. But again, trending, what has lasted years and years and years and years? What are the general Christmas colors? What are they? You guys already know. So yeah, there's outliers. I mean, I've seen some pink Christmas trees. I've seen some really innovative and cool things, but what's really gonna stick? I mean, inflatable yard, yard art, I call it yard inflatables. Those have been steady for like at least 10 years, right? And when they first started coming out with them, thought some things have come and gone over time, but now like everybody's got these inflatable things. So those seem to be pretty reliable. If you've seen them year over year over year and they don't come and go and they just stay around, those are the things we need to focus on. Don't chase the trends. If toy And also don't jump out of your comfort zone. Okay, do jump out of your comfort zone, but not so far out of it. If you aren't comfortable with toys, Q4 is not the time to start becoming familiar. 
because all of the charts like Keepa and everything else are all over the place. They're up, they're down, they're this, they're that. You, you just don't really know. So there's plenty to sell in Q4 that don't have to be toys. Guess what? Most people, a lot of people, I shouldn't say most people, I should look up the statistics. So I'm not going to give you any sort of random numbers. But I looked this up before. It's actually in the Q4 class, the real statistic from like 2021 or something. 2022. That There's a lot of people that don't buy toys at all. They don't have any children to buy for and they don't buy toys. But they certainly buy for bosses and brother-in-laws and men and women and grandparents and parents and neighbors and friends. Friendsgiving. Have you ever heard of Friendsgiving? It's like just getting together with your friends because maybe your family's too far away or whatever, having Thanksgiving. Um, all kinds of different reasons. Table linens, decorations, hostess gifts, outfits and clothes, matching pajamas, baby's first Christmas, jewelry shoes all kinds of stuff people do family portraits they're looking for uh, you know coordinating outfits they're looking for new purses all kinds of products and then products also like thanksgiving for example what do people do on thanksgiving what kind of holiday is it food it's food related right so anything food related uh it's the biggest time of year to sell like i mean isn't this captain obvious right but like turkey fryers this has like one season like if you're in the turkey fryer business when are you really selling a turkey fryer september october november some people so you gotta you, you know things like that roast big giant roasters and basters and um throw away you know catering kind of pans because people bring different leftovers or pyrex travel I don't know, I, what is it, nine by 13 travel. Like I have one that's like insulated and it has a handle on it, it has a lid and you can bring your casserole dish to wherever you're coming and be like, here's my contribution, keeps it nice and hot, stuff like that. Those are things that people are buying and looking to buy. Also, it's the biggest time of year for air mattresses, believe it or not. Yeah, air mattresses and, and guest room spruce ups and things like that. Did you also? that this is the time of year that most people do home improvements because they know their family's coming into town in the next month or so and they want to make sure that everything looks nice and looks good and you know keeping up with the joneses or whatever i don't know what it is but it is absolutely that time of year i, I know this from well, first of all my husband's a carpenter um and does like handyman services and some other things like that like just just people start redoing their bathrooms and stuff september october because they want to be ready for the holidays you want to be ready for when grandma comes to stay and you know we did this fresh new bathroom or we have this new guest room or whatever it is so it's just something to consider that as well you know why because you sell product on the biggest marketplace in the world so knowing when and how things are quote unquote in season is really important for you to know next tip here do not price panic oh i hate price panicking people are used to two-day free shipping they're used to ordering last minute stuff all the time. In the week leading up to a holiday, don't price panic. Don't think, oh my gosh, if I don't get rid of this stuff, I'm going to be stuck with it forever. Number one, check your indexing. Number one, make sure that your item is visible. If it's already selling, it's not time to lower your price. It's time to raise your price. Because those last minute shoppers don't have a choice. Ask me how I know. <laughs> it's my life. I'm so last minute. And then I get mad and have to go to a real store because I didn't get it on Amazon in time and it's not going to arrive. That's literally me. Like when I only think of it 24 hours ahead of time. Good luck with that. <laughs> Do not panic and lower your prices. Make sure that your item is visible. Make sure that they can, someone can see it. Bid on, if you have to, instead of lowering your price, bid on your strongest keyword and no it's not christmas thanksgiving this that it is what is your item what is it if you're looking at a thanksgiving tablecloth that is a certain size don't lower your price add a couple of dollars a day to that one keyword or that keyword phrase thanksgiving tablecloth in a specific color maybe or design add 
a dollar a day for 10 days if you're really worrying about that do not lower your price instead keep your price and maybe sacrifice a dollar or two for, for visibility if you're not getting the right hits if it's not selling the way that you want to there's other free things that you can do as well there's free things that you can do to kind of boost your visibility you can pin your item on pinterest you can put it on facebook marketplace and if somebody looks at it, you'd be like, oh, is this still available? And then you can actually send them the Amazon link. Have you ever done that? It's like a new Facebook Marketplace kind of tip. You take a picture, you put it on Facebook Marketplace. You're like, hey, I have these for sale. People are like, hey, how much? Or what's the shipping or whatever? And your drop is shipping from Amazon, from your own store. I mean, these things are free and take like a few, I mean, literally a Facebook Marketplace listing takes less than 10 minutes if you already have the pictures you already have description you already have any of that stuff it's literally like drop and drag in place and you'd be, be surprised how many people you reach from there different audience maybe different people hanging out and shopping there versus amazon i mean i always assume that everybody's on amazon and everybody loves amazon but the reality is there's people that shop everywhere all the time there are people that pay more on other places than they actually do on amazon because they don't want to shop there for some reason or maybe they got a banned account or they're just mad at them. I don't know. Do not panic and lower your prices. And also items sell after holidays as well. I sell Christmas stuff through February. I actually sell Christmas stuff in like May, June, and July. I don't like to, and I don't often keep a lot of those things in stock, but if I have one or two items that are still there that I, I keep in stock, we actually just started selling some Christmas stuff already in September. So it's something that like we start stocking this time of year because we realize that there are people that like to shop early. And a lot of the people that we're, we make assumptions, but sometimes we see the names come through and things like that. A lot of businesses buy Christmas stuff ahead of time because they need to be ready ahead of time to welcome in their clients or their shoppers or their business people. You know, a lot of people even have Christmas company Christmas parties the first week of December. So if your stuff's not there and in and ready, those people are ordering in November, right? Even before Black Friday. Speaking of, be ready, be ready. Black Friday is when everyone's shopping. And when thing they go to, if people go to stores or online and things sell out, they still want the thing that they looked for at that great deal. And even though it's not that great deal, they still want it. And people start to panic and think, if these sold out already here, I'm not gonna get this before Christmas. And they go to Amazon and they make sure, oh, Amazon has it, okay, great. So there's ways to sneak peek at what's gonna be selling for Black Friday. And then you actually look forward and you say, I'm gonna stock up on some of that stuff. Now that can be a little bit risky as well unless you're you know you're getting it for a really good deal and you're making profit no matter what so that's more of like an arbitrage flip kind of thing and i don't recommend that for this time of year i would trust suppliers that would want to get stuff in early don't ever assume a price will go up either never assume that your price on something oh this is gonna fly off the shelf and double in price we cannot predict the future and some people have tried that. Oh, Amazon's been out of stock for so long. And then all of a sudden they get 1,400 pallet loads full of stuff. They have 100,000 units in stock and you have 10 of them that you can't sell until Amazon sells out because their price is way better than yours. Happens. Another thing I will tell you is watch prices. In the Q4 class that I talked about, we actually go through this over the shoulder and I show you how to um, like look this up. But if you go to Keepa and you track a price for something, watch your prices and then raise them when your competitors sell out. So that's another thing as well. If you have competitors and you're selling something specific that has a lot of competition, watch your other seller. This can change daily or hourly sometimes in Q4. So yeah, guess what? We have to work a little bit more this time of year, but also... We make more money. We usually make more money during Q4, so it's worth the extra work. But it's not worth sacrificing all of your family time either. So making sure you're planning ahead that you're probably going to do a little bit more work in Q4. Another thing, trust the facts, not the feelings. There's facts. There's data. There's years and years and years of Q4 data. There's years and years of data looking at like what sells, what sells the best, um, what sells consistently and steadily and over, 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 year, over year. Just do some research and feel like, you know what? I wanna take the least possible risk 
and sell something that I know sells really well this time of year and maybe I'll take a little less profit knowing that these things sell and sell consistently and there's not a ton of competition. Look, not everybody wants to sell Christmas trees, but they sell every single year and all kinds of sizes, shapes, colors, pre-lit, not pre-lit, two foot trees, 10 foot trees, 12 foot trees, all the time. And Christmas trees sell early because most people wanna put them up by the first week of December. We put our Christmas decorations up the um, Saturday after Thanksgiving every single year. It is tradition. We have a whole hoopla of tradition that we do on that day. Um, so everybody has their traditions and they, when they start decorating, like literally my little sister would probably put her Christmas tree up right now if no one thought she was nuts. So there are those that are very early birds and they want to enjoy their Christmas decorations early. So early is the key, right? Watch and trust the data. Look at the past data, spend an hour just researching the one thing that you're looking for. Look at the different charts, look at how much you can get here and there. Think local, there are places locally that make things that you can order and buy, rare things. And always, this is going to be a tip that scares everybody, but try ordering 10% more than what you're comfortable with. It will avoid the, oh, I wish I would have bought more of those syndrome. Look at last year's sales if you have them. If you have sales from last year, look at them and see what you sold. See if those things are still selling right now and just replenish them. You can replenish seasonal inventory. We've had, we have something for Valentine's Day that we sell and we've had it for like five years. It is the most simplest thing in the world, but it sells like crazy between like January 10th and February 10th. You can sell like a hundred, I mean, this is nothing to sneeze at. Some people like laugh at this stuff. We don't sell a ton of units of stuff, you guys. Just so you know, we have a lot of steady eddy bundles and then we have, we pepper in the seasonal. The seasonal is short run, but you can make thousands really quickly on just one product if you stick with it. So we have a thing, uh, um, a Valentine's Day one that just really, we can sell like a hundred and some units for like literally a six week period. It's not a long time, but if it's something you can come in and make, you know, 10 or 15 bucks on really quickly, it's a nice boost for your inventory. So just kind of a recap. Don't let fear stop you. Preparation is key. Be prepared, be prepared now. You're in retail, get, get it done. Many people who aren't normal everyday Amazon sellers too, use Amazon much more in Q4 than any other times. My sister doesn't even have Amazon Prime, yet she shops on Amazon for Q4. I don't know why she doesn't have Amazon Prime. I think that's crazy to be honest. Some people don't, that's fine. I'm just like, oh my gosh, how do you live without that? <laughs> it's such a modern convenience. But anyway, they still shop on Amazon this time of year. So even if they're not prime customers, you're bringing in new stuff. Amazon does the, Am the, the marketing for you. You just have to have the products available. Even a 10% increase will help. Add a 10% seasonal increase to each order, each trip that you make. Look for something, something out of your comfort zones. So again, reach out to us if you want more, if you want a Q4 class. Y'all, I've been teaching this class for at least five years. Uh, this is just the only year I haven't taught it live, but the class is still amazing. All of the stuff is there. If you wanna know what to sell, selling strategies, shipping deadlines, even the holiday shipping calendar, uh, things like that, you can reach out to us at admin at mommyincome.com and ask about the Q4 class. And we're happy to um, let you know how you can get that. But in the meantime, be prepared for Q4. People are shopping. Be ready, switch now to your holiday selling season because you need to be ahead of the curve. So it's time to get to work, y'all. Go crush Q4. If you have any questions, of course, you can always reach out to us, DM us, uh, email us. We're happy to support you in any way we can with training and coaching and of course, wholesale bundles. 
one of my favorite bundles is coming up. I do a Christmas box every single year. Um, that in the, for the past couple of years, it's done really, really well. And I'm excited to see that one this year. We've revamped it just a little bit and it has a little bit of new packaging. So I'm excited to hear about your Christmas bundles, your Thanksgiving bundles, things like that you have. Reach out to us. We'd love to help you. Mommyincome.com forward slash subscribe. Make sure you subscribe. Make sure you hit the little bell here to tell us, hey, I like your channel. Your channel's awesome. We love our subscribers. We love answering comments and questions. Um, thank you for liking our videos and sharing them with other people. I know you could be anywhere else doing any other thing, listening to anyone else. And I don't take that for granted. I appreciate you listening and supporting Mommy Income here. I'm here. If you have any content uh, that you would like to request, we are happy to uh, make videos and make training that you might need to help move your business forward. So reach out, ask. We'd be happy to help you. Again, if you want the Q4 class, reach out to us. It shows that you're interested and that means we want to give you a really good deal. So until next time, we'll see you same time, same place next week on the Amazon Files.